Hey guys, this is Jan for Chess24 and I'm excited about this video because we're gonna be taking a look at Kramnik against Nakamura. One of my favorite matchups in modern chess has led to a lot of bloodshed. Nakamura has been doing very well against Kramnik, has won many a game against him. Kramnik also had his share of victories. The two meet again in round two of the London Chess Classic 2014. And without spoiling the result, we are in for quite a battle. Kramnik with the white pieces goes for 1d4, his main move. Of course, we see him going c4 or knight f3 frequently as well, but all d4 players do that to balance their approach to the openings today. No nonsense, he goes 1d4. Nakamura is always looking for a fight against Kramnik, has played a lot of Kings Indians, has played some Leningrad Dutch against him even. And today he goes for the King's Indian, d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6. Kramnik, very classical player, plays the main line, bishop e2, castles, knight f3, e5. Here is where it gets interesting. Kramnik was one of the guys who really pioneered this line, castles, knight c6, d5, knight e7, and b4. And he's played this before against Nakamura, but lost the game against Nakamura in this line as well. And today he's got something very nasty up his sleeve, which has not been that frequent a guest at top level chess. Move d5. I believe it's called the Petrosian variation. It's a very principled move. White seizes the first chance he gets to claim extra space in the center and is saying, you know what? I have a space advantage, I'm better, I'm gonna squeeze you. Then there's many nuances to it, but one we should keep in mind is that white does not castle yet, does not commit his king to the king side. And this will be a very important factor later on. The main move here is the move played by Nakamura, the move a5, which not only stops b4, but also prepares to develop this knight via a6 and c5. And nowadays it's a more popular choice than knight bd7, which of course remains a playable move. That's considered to be less flexible than playing a5 and knight a6, leaving this bishop open. So a5, bishop g5, no surprise yet, this is a line that has been played quite a bit. h6 is once again the standard reply, forcing this bishop to choose which diagonal wants to stay and which one it wants to abandon. And this is where the surprise comes, because pretty much everybody, including Nakamura in a recent game against Bakro, chooses the move bishop h4 here, which looks logical, keeping this pin alive. But Kramnik has something else in mind. He goes back to e3, and he's going to try to prove that having forced h6 is a concession from black. Now here is where things get concrete. Black has to do something. If he were to play knight a6, then white gets a setup that is highly desirable for him by playing knight to d2, after which he can switch to standard queenside play with a3, b4. He has still not committed his king to the king side, so he's flexible to react on the king side, even playing moves like g4 or h4 if needed. And this setup with bishop on e3 and knight on d2 is really one white always strives for in many King's Indian positions, black normally doesn't want him to get it. Which is why after bishop e3, black has to react and he does play the move knight to g4, forcing this bishop to retreat even further. Bishop d2. Now in order to justify knight to g4, and also because it's the typical King's Indian move, black plays the move f5. If he wouldn't and played knight a6, he wouldn't have reached very much, white just goes h3. The knight has to go back to f6. So f5 is the move you would expect here and the move played. But of course Vladimir Kramnik, he's not just randomly moving his pieces around. He doesn't think, okay, I'll go bishop g5, now to e3, now to d2. But he has analyzed all this and he has a very concrete idea up his sleeve. Starts with h3, chasing the knight back, knight f6, e takes f. And after g takes f, it really looks like black has achieved everything you could hope for in the king's Indian. He has this powerful dynamic pawn center, 
both f4 and e4 are constantly in the air. He has the half open g file, which is not really dangerous for his king, but could even be used to create an attack against the white king, should white castle. So it looks good strategically. But Kramnik has a very strong novelty up his sleeve and he uses it here. The move queen to c1. New move, we've seen the move castles before, but by lesser players. Instead, queen c1, very direct, very computerish approach to the game. I'm gonna attack your pawn and you have to do something about it. Maybe there's no good solution. The obvious answer would be king h7, but that runs into the very powerful g4 when white takes over the initiative very quickly. f takes g, h takes g, just does not work for black. One sample line is knight takes g4, knight to g5 check, king has to go back to g8. Knight to e6, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight takes f2, and just rook to h2. It turns out that white wins, which of course is a very computerish line, but it does work. Queen f6 runs into knight d5. And if you don't go queen f6, the knight on f2 doesn't really have anywhere to go and can't be defended. Just a sample line to show how concrete Kramnik's approach is here. He hasn't castle yet and he's ready to meet king h7 with g4, which poses black great, great problems. Knight to a6, for example, g5. Also does not look like a walk in the park. Let's say tykes, knight takes, king h8, rook g1. Now the black king is starting to feel the heat a little bit. Knight e6 is in the air. And while this position might be still be quite unclear, I do understand Nakamura did not fancy it. So after queen c1, Nakamura played the move f4, interrupting this connection. e4 was another move you always think about in such situations. But both knight to d4 and knight to h4 look very promising for white. e4 also not a move you want to play positionally here. So f4 is logical, but Kramnik of course keeps playing concretely, goes g3, trying to undermine this black pawn structure. And here f takes g3 does does come to mind and it's a legal move, but it's a concession positionally yet again. h6 is hanging, the pretty black pawn center has disappeared. Knight h4, bishop d3, there's all kinds of useful moves in the air, creating play on these slightly weakened dark squares. So no surprise that Nakamura did not enjoy f takes g3 and as I said he plays in very dynamic King's Indian fashion as well. He pushes his other pawn, goes e4, knight goes to h4, and e3. Once again, fg, fg, no good for black. And f3 was a possible move, but white just goes bishop to d1. Once again, h6 is hanging, this bishop goes to c2. White is better. So e3 is typical, and the best move in this position, f takes e and f takes g. This position, if you haven't analyzed it at home, it's by no means clear that white should be better here. Black is a powerful passed pawn. White king is still in the middle, and this battery at the moment doesn't do all that much with the queen c1 bishop on d2. But that's the beauty or the curse of the year 2014. This position can be analyzed with powerful computers, and judging by the speed of Kramnik's play, he did analyze it with powerful computers. Goes knight g6 and he knows he's in good shape here. Rook f7, Nakamura was out of book here, was taking a lot of time. Bishop e3 is a very rare line. Rook f7 was played. I checked a bit if black can sacrifice the exchange here with g2, rook g1, bishop takes h3. But it looks like white ends up being in the driver's seat after takes and queen c2, planning long castles. So rook f7 is correct. Queen to c2, once again intending to castle queenside. Knight f to d7. I like this idea, it's up for debate if black is in time to complete it, but the plan is very sound. He wants to put this knight on c5 and threaten bishop f5 
to get all his pieces into the game. And that's why it has to be knight fd7, because after knight bd7, there's no threat really. Let's say long castles, knight to c5, rook g1. These are not, no, these are actually terrible moves. I should make better moves to illustrate my point. My point is that there is no bishop f5 threat. So if you go, let's say rook g1, knight c5, rook takes g3, there is no bishop f5 in the air. White comes out on top. So knight fd7 is very creative and a very nice move to trying to coordinate the pieces. But Vladimir Kramnik was in time not to allow all that. He goes castle queenside. And here I was very surprised that Nakamura did not play the move knight to c5. Turns out after some analyzing, not that much I have to confess, that white seems to be better after the move e4, just stopping bishop to f5. One key problem is that g2 in this position can now be met by rook h2, when the other rook does the job of controlling the g5 square, the g1 square, I'm sorry. And it turns out white is better. Very, very hard to play. The computer gives some fantasy moves here. I don't even understand this move. h5 is the best move according to the computer. So no wonder Nakamura did not like this. Instead went for the move knight to e5. But now one already starts getting the feeling this could end very ugly for black. Knight e5, he spent three moves now just exchanging this knight on g6. And it's very, very tough for him to get all his pieces going without allowing white some breakthrough on the king side. Rook h to f1 is a very, very strong move not letting the initiative go. It's also a very good move on general principles because white has a lot of pieces in the game already and then it is often a good idea to exchange defenders from the weaker side who has less pieces in play like the rook on f7 here. White doesn't mind to exchange one pair of rooks as long as he has one rook on the king side while the black rook, the other black rooks, ends up being stuck on a8. It's a very nice move which also stops the concrete threat of bishop to f5. Multipurpose, rook takes f1, rook takes f1, bishop takes h3, g2 might have looked more natural, but then just rook g1 and bishop takes h3. There is many good moves, knight to f4, probably the easiest, winning the pawn back and maintaining the initiative. So when Nakamura took immediately, just rook g1 and it turns out black is just not in time to get anything going. He's always missing one tempo. g2 we just saw, then knight f4 is strong. Even knight d1 I believe was a good move, planning knight to f2. <clears throat> knight d7 is very, very well met by rook takes g3 and this bishop has nowhere to go. It's tough to make a good move with black here. So Nakamura plays queen to f6. <clears throat> Bringing the queen into the game. But it already feels like something's gone wrong. And white has a pleasant choice between rook takes g3, which he plays, and the move knight f4, which also wins the pawn back. After bishop f5, e4, let's say bishop h7, rook takes g3. Also favors white. So since white is clearly better from here on, one has to ask himself, what happened? Where did black go wrong? The honest answer is, I don't really know. Apart from choosing the King's Indian, which Kramnik tongue-in-cheek called a bad opening at the press conference, it's not easy to point your finger at where he made a mistake. He made all the critical principal moves and ended up in a bad situation. One would have to analyze even further but certainly what is clear is that Vladimir Kramnik showed some very, very nasty home preparation in this game. And he said that much, that he had this line up his sleeve for over a year and thought if he gets this on the board, he would pretty much crush anybody. And that's what looks to be happening here after rook takes g3. 
No good move for black. Bishop f5 is the move you want to play, but it runs into a typical tactic. Queen takes f5, queen takes f5, and 97 check, white wins. So you can't do that. Instead, he took on g6, already offering white a bit of a choice. Rook takes h3 is a good move, but rook takes g6 is an even better move, and that's the move Kramnik played. Queen f7, rook g3 back. Note that even here it's not easy for white at all. Material is equal, and if black gets in two moves, he could very well be in good shape. But Kramnik not once lets the initiative go. Every move is threatening something. Rook g3 attacks the bishop. Bishop f5, e4 attacks it again. Bishop g6, bishop g4 threatens to win the queen with bishop e6. Queen f1 check, knight to d1 once again. There's threats in the air, bishop e6, bishop a3, bishop c8 even. Bishop to e5 counterattacks against the white rook. Bishop h3, another very strong move, more precise than bishop e6 check when after king h7. Black is kind of back in the game. Bishop a3 forces this queen back, goes to f6. Should not go to f7 because it would lose its life there. So it goes to f6 and rook g1. Even this move threatens bishop f5 picking up the piece on g6. Black just never gets a timeout to get his knight and there with the rook into the game. Very impressive power play by Vladimir Kramnik. King h7, a tempo yet to lose. Once again, every move threatening and attacking things. Bishop f5, bishop takes, e takes f5. Now rook g6 is coming. It can't really be stopped. So Nakamura finally decides to develop that knight. He didn't have a better move anyway. But right after rook g6, white wins a pawn and he keeps attacking. So he does have the attack and the compensation, as they say, which is always a good point to start. Rook h6, king g7, no, king g8, sorry, rook g6, king f8 is forced, king h7 would run into queen e4 threatening checkmate, which is very hard to stop. So king f8, and another classy move by the former world champion Vladimir Kramnik. He asks himself, what's my weakest piece? Which piece can I use to collapse the black defenses? And the answer is the knight. Because knight f2, which is the best square, playing knight g4 and knight h6. Or knight e4 and knight g5, which would overstretch black's thin defenses. b5, an attempt to get counterplay by undermining the d5 pawn, but it is a case of too little too late. Kramnik is not distracted, goes knight to g4, planning knight h6. b takes c4, hoping to meet knight h6 with queen takes d5. All of a sudden, black would be back in business. But no such luck. Instead, the very cool queen takes c4, which has a nice tactical point that is to be revealed after queen takes f5. Played in the game. I don't think Nakamura blundered white's next move. I think he just considered his position to be hopeless. And it is. There's too many threats. Bishop h6 check is in the air. Black just can't do very much all these Things on the C files are falling as well. Still, queen takes f5 did kind of accelerate the end because of the cute move rook g8 check, hoping to force the black queen into a fork after king g8, knight h6. It would disappear from the board very soon. Instead, king e7 was played, but this does not delay the end much longer. Bishop g5 check. King f7 doesn't work because of knight h6. Yet again, bishop f6 was tried in the game. One more check. Queen e2 finally overstretches black's defenses. Nothing he can do. Look for yourself. Knight e5, bishop takes f6 with check. Bishop e5 is not a legal move because of bishop takes e7. And king f7 runs into knight h6 which not only picks up the queen, but also checkmates. 
So it's no surprise that Nakamura decided to call it a day to resign after Queen E2 check. And what a game by Vladimir Kramnik, really. Never let go. Pure power play and a very, very nasty idea in the opening. This bishop g5 and bishop e3 with a very sound positional base, planning knight d2. But of course, knight g4 is a critical test when all hell broke loose and Kramnik clearly knew more than his opponent in this line. Very impressive win by Vladimir Kramnik, who moves into, at the very least, shared first in the London Chess Classic. After two rounds, he has one and a half out of two, or four out of six, if you want to use the three-point system. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye, everybody.